I, yeah, I had the world in my hands. I was a successful driving executive with a wonderful family, everything going well, and then suddenly I'm sick, and I don't know why. I got long about 25 years ago. At that point, very little was known about it. Uh, I had a rash on my back that lost off as poison ivy, and then everything went away. So two months later, every bone hurts, every joint aches, my uh, mental uh, faculties were getting fuzzy. I was um, working uh, as the head of IBM's Asia Pacific operation and uh, considered a, a possible candidate to run IBM and uh, uh, one doesn't like to just drop out of the race so I attempted to work through this. Uh, but I finally saw the handwriting on the wall and said, uh, I think it's, it's time for me to retire. And now I'm only 53 years old. Five years after I initially contracted the disease, finally, in a very serendipitous way, I discovered that that's what I had. And I then uh, began a regimen of uh, intravenous and oral uh, antibiotics, which lasted for over two years. But I was still struggling with aches, pains, arthritic neurological symptoms. I'm a very passionate person that wants to do a lot and has a lot of energy. My body cannot keep up. I started a clothing line with a business partner who knows that when I need to go home early from work, go home and it's really, really helpful to have his support and to not be doing, running a company on my own. A lot of my strategy on how to structure my days and my weeks are based around, is this going to be too much for me? Because I get to the end of my rope much faster than others due to Lyme disease. Overall, I was misdiagnosed with Lyme disease for 11 years. I was bit by a tick at seven years old. I definitely knew something was wrong. I did not feel right. I was experiencing a lot of joint pain. It was to the point where it would bring me to tears. Couldn't read properly, couldn't speak properly. I, I would be walking down the street and forget where I was going, forget where I was. No kid wants to feel different. No, no kid wants to look at their paper and think, I studied harder than any of these kids here. They got A's and I got like a C. I didn't end up going to college. And I was scared. I was scared of taking the tests. I was scared of the homework. I was scared that I wasn't able to do it to my fullest potential. I used to um, wonder if I'd be healthy enough to have children. And that was the one thing that really scared me. Finally, I just gave up. And I spent a lot of time alone in my bed. A lot of, there were a lot of tears shed. I think there were times where I didn't want to really like wake up. Fortunately, my parents got me right on to amazing medications brought me the amazing Lyme disease specialists and that's really the key. I would go on antibiotics, I would slowly get better and then I'd be completely, I'd feel great for about three and a half, four months. Well when I felt the symptoms coming back uh, it would frighten me to my very core because I knew what to expect. Well my father, he was like right there at every doctor's appointment and um, that's what kept me going. I want to do anything to prevent any other child from going through what I went through. It was a really, really tough, um, it was really tough physically and emotionally. I think it's pretty widely accepted that the symptoms of chronic Lyme disease include inflammation at various sites where the spirochete is thought to have traveled. So the pleura, the joints, the brain. If all of us are bitten by the tick in the room, everybody, our immune response to the tick bite and the organism that is left in us by the tick is different. It's why some people respond very well to 28 days of antibiotics and other people don't. Many disease-causing organisms like bacteria or viruses can stimulate redness, swelling, heat, 
and it's very desirable because it helps clear the bacteria right away. Everybody has inflammatory cells and in people that are going to recover from a lot of infections have a mechanism to kill them when they're done with their job. Some people's cells that are pro-inflammatory are easily triggerable. They don't go away, so instead of having a good anti-Borrelia response, you have chronic inflammation. And it doesn't help you, because by that time, the bacteria has disseminated all over the body. That's the bad news. The good news is we've developed a mechanism that will control inflammation by killing off cells that should have died if the person had had a typical protective immune response. But leave alive those that are anti-Borrelia because that's normally how the immune system works. There's a lot of excitement about anything new and our work supports a very novel model in a group of suffering people, the last thing you want to do is make a promise you can't keep. And I don't want to hype this at all. And I feel that based on what we've been seeing so far, we have a moral responsibility to test this hypothesis because it has the potential to impact so many lives. And I'm very hopeful that we're not far away from that at all. Good evening. My name is Robert Corbury with the Investment Bank of Credit Suisse. I'm also a co-chairman of the Scientific Review Board for Time for Lyme. And it's my job and Harriet's job and those on the Scientific Review Board to make sure that every dollar you give and every application that comes in for funding, we can actually get the biggest bang for our buck. But you're here tonight at a time when medical science is really at an inflection point, where we can finally have the tools to understand what is going on when you're bitten by a tick. But if you're considering making an investment and you're concerned that your investment is just a small ripple in a sea of funding that's required, you would be very wrong. For Karen to do the next phase of her research probably is sitting at one table here tonight. So I ask you tonight to come with me and continue the journey, but not the journey that we all started with when we all had the effects of Lyme disease and where we couldn't find the medical treatment or even the respect from the medical community that we deserve. I'm talking about the journey to fix that and to go forward in a positive direction with those at Time for Lyme because we're going to be the ones, our family of contributors, our family of researchers, of volunteers and of staff, we're going to be the ones that are going to be the ones to break through the deadlock on this awful disorder, both politically, socially, and medically.